Good evening, we are live. Everything has been going very good actually today, which is kind of weird. Hopefully everybody else is having a good day. I see a couple folks on here already. It's still kind of early. Hey Disney Family 515, how you doing Marty? Still cool here this Friday morning, but I hope I'm near the top in your chat. eBay wants to refund a buyer who wanted to cancel but didn't actually pay. That's a new one there. I have not seen that one there, Duncan, at all. You will have to give them a call. I'm pretty sure you are a anchor store as well. That would be my honest guess. I have not heard of that one at all, honestly. That's a new one. Maybe it went through their path and never posted to your side, but either way, that's pretty scary to see that happening. Um, you'll have to keep me informed on that one too, Duncan. I'd be interested to know what uh, transpires with that. Hang on just a second here. Let me swap back over to another screen just to make sure I'm not dropping frames. Hey, Mary, how are you doing this evening? Good to see you on here as well. DMH Products, good evening. Carl, and right below Carl, I got Aaron. Aaron number four, I think I have in Patreon. One Aaron changed the name, so it made it a lot easier. Blast off, yes. Yes, definitely. We're going to talk about what I found out in the streets, how sourcing's going. Um, it's just been a uh, stock full of stuff everywhere I go, even though I'm not even really looking. I keep running into stuff. Hey, Hudson Resell, how are you doing this evening? Bob, how's Bob doing today? I, I now set a 3.45 for every Thursday on my phone. So 3.45, you must be in CA time would be my guess then. PJ Miller, how are you doing? I got Annie right below. How's Annie doing this evening? Marikex 7, Seattle. I have been to Seattle once before. Hey, Mike, how you doing, Mike? I, I wrote down and I keep got that on my list. I wanted to ask you about those magazines they pulled, just curiosity's sake. I did see your post. Um, I still have it on my list to do, so when I go into the emails tomorrow, I'm going to shoot you a line, Mike. J&J &J flipping count, uh, couple. How are you guys doing? Always good to see a couple on here, especially two that I have uh, been out in public with and done some sourcing. Hopefully you two are doing well. There is something coming up in another month or two. I don't know what the situation will be, you two, but maybe there'll be some chance to uh, get together when it's a little safer. Hey, Rob, how's Rob doing this evening? Lizzie, can anyone tell me why... Uh, well, that's off the topic. I am going to remove that one because that has nothing to do with what we're talking about here. If it will do its little thing. Hopefully everybody is doing okay. Hang on just a second here. That's running slow. You guys know how my feet is. Okay. Just a second here. Boy, my feed's just terrible right now. Getting it to do anything. Hang on, folks. Just a second. I do apologize. Boy, I hate that it's so frozen here. Let me try doing it somewhere else. Hopefully everybody is doing okay. Give me just one more second here. Go through this. Okay, it's only showing up in one spot like that. Southern California, I had to figure, just by your time zone. Let me pop back down just a little more here. Always got to get a troll or two on, never fails. Uh, where are we at? Hey, Jeffrey, how are you doing this evening? Well, thank you very kindly, Mary. How's Dino from Montreal? I have been to Montreal. We went to Quebec before, and had this not been a pandemic, we would be in Canada probably right about now, believe it or not. This was our, our itinerary was planned for this month, so we would have been in Canada right after my son graduated. So, you know, we kind of scrapped the trip, obviously. Bob, yeah, the video is going to be up in Patreon first. It's probably going to be a three-day preview and then roll out. You'll have at least three days, I'll say. Um, it's literally about done. We're just putting a little tweaks in it. When you see it, you'll know it took a lot of time, a lot of stuff in it. It, it is nothing like you've ever seen. It has nothing to do with 
basically anything you see like the auction professor it has no auction professor title or intro or anything like that so it's totally different it's um very uh centered obviously just on weebles and it goes and you get to see a lot of vintage ones um nos old stock and all kinds of stuff in the videos we've got i think we've got six totally done already we're going to stagger them out every week or two we'll put another one out it's going to be just something extra um i'd do it even if it wasn't you know well received because it's something me and the wife had a, a real big ball doing together um it's fun to collaborate when you get along with your partner and we had a lot of fun doing it and stuff I got outtakes, Bob, too, so there'll be some outtakes on Patreon, so you'll get to see um, some behind the scenes. You did see one little clip, but that's like some random clip that I posted out, too. There's stuff before that, and that's literally in the beginning. So it's, I think, 12 minutes and 42 seconds, I think, the first episode of it is. So um, it's it's totally different. It's totally out there than anything else, so... Yeah, Duncan, I, I fully agree it is selling. We've The only issues we've had is I haven't been able to list a whole bunch with everything we're doing. We've been doing a lot of testing with Shopify and stuff like that. Um, I just wanted to call to, I had a, somebody post and stuff, I'll, I'll call it a troll, saying I'm trying to market the whole Shopify to everybody, trying to get everybody to go to and buy stuff from me. The, the stuff that I sell, 99.9% .9 of the people who watch the show aren't going to buy it. They're, they're interested in finding out about it. So there is no attempt whatsoever in my mind at all trying to market you guys what I sell. It, it's just, it would, it would be ridiculous because most everybody, again, wouldn't be interested in a 150, 140 year old piece of paper for 40 bucks. It just makes no sense. You got to be a collector to buy what I sell. So anyway, just throwing that out there. Lelia? Or Layla, I'm sorry. It's a little hard to see on here. My feed freezes so much too, and it's frozen right now. Again, uh, let's just shoot this out there. I, I've been on the streets a little bit, and I've went by a few places. Um, everything is flooded with merchandise to buy. And I, I mean, just Godsmack flooded with just every type of thing I, I could imagine. My favorite bolo... Um, and I've talked about it. I'm going to talk about it tomorrow on the Patreon video that's literally processing right now. Tomorrow's Patreon video is a haul, a small haul, an unexpected haul. You're going to see what I got for 19 just over $19. I got a lot of stuff for 19 bucks, just little tiny stuff that's um, some really good stuff. I'll show you tomorrow. You'll get to see it. it. Literally, I've already edited it. It's just processing. If I get time, I'll try and upload it at least tonight, um, but it will be up tomorrow. It's literally totally done, every little aspect of it. Um, so Patreon will have that. Tomorrow's video for here is up as well. Let's see if I can get into the feed real quick as it's popping now. There we go. Uh, let me pop down. What is it, 5,000? How are you doing? Don Periocho, how are you doing as well? Hey, Gabe, how's it going, Gabe? And right below Gabe, I got Penny. How are you doing, Penny? You're in here almost every week, I would have to say. Regina, how's Regina doing as well? And now my feed is... up. Oh, there we go. It's still going. Are you a collector? Good evening as well. San Diego. Now, I have been in San Diego before as well. Hey, Rich, how are you doing as well? The Stunlaw One, welcome, welcome. There are only... Anyone had problems selling Confederate postcards? If it has a flag on it, I was told no. That is against the rules um, if it has a flag. Don't put the word flag in there at all. Even if it's just got a tiny profile and you can't even see it is what I've been under the impression still works on that. I, I can't say for sure, but I know the monument cards have went through the roof for selling wise um, and stuff like that, especially the ones that were in city parks that may or may not be there. So, again, I'm not trying to be political in any way. That's just just um, what I've been seeing. And I've had a lot of people tell me that as well. Um, with sourcing, I've gotten more really good stuff for almost nothing, I think, this year, more so than any other year I've ever been out there sourcing. And people have been sending me photos of this and that and stuff, especially some Patreons. I would say there's probably... Jeez, a large percentage, 10, 15% of patrons who sent me photos in the last, say, two weeks or so that's just found some phenomenal items. There's there's someone in the feed now that's found thousand plus dollar records and photos. And I mean, the list of stuff that people have been finding is just horrendous. 
obviously people need the money so the stuff seems to be going out on the street so uh, it, it's just been an extravaganza to find stuff i literally went out to go to the post office and the stuff patreon's going to see was literally just down the street from the post office if i wouldn't have went to the post office i wouldn't have seen it wouldn't anything it was close by it's the only reason i even went but again my favorite bolo something that i use almost every day is in that lot and it looks like i got two of them i'm gonna open them up in that video you'll see it opened and um you'll get to see some close-ups of some things that i've just talked about to show you how prevalent some of the bolo items i talk about are and it's some really cool stuff i was really surprised for a quarter for some of the pieces um it's just phenomenal but it's a proof in the pudding it's just what i was talking about some of the things we're going to show you so anyway let's pop back over here Weather has been bad in uh, North uh, Minnesota and Canada. You are not missing anything. I have. We've had some rain, but they're still running stuff out here. Um, I heard talk about the flea markets and all that stuff too. Still going to roll. So if that happens, you know, I may may venture out. You know, mask in hand and and go on out there. I don't really need to source, so that's why I, I'm I'm still buying stuff because again, it's it's dirt cheap. I can't believe how cheap I've been finding stuff that I'm not even looking for, you know, I'll just casually go out somewhere and stuff just been falling in my hands. My phone has been ringing a lot with people with pickups and stuff. My pickers have called. I mean, it's just been a lot of stuff out there and it's a constant flow of people telling me pretty much the same thing that are hitting the streets. I know there's still some folks that can't go out or there still may not be any uh, sourcing abilities that way. I do believe the thrift stores, uh, some of the thrift stores are open here in town as well. I did go buy, I didn't go in it, but I did go buy one and it was opened. Um, I just wasn't planning on going anywhere, so I didn't stop. But just curious how everybody else is picking out there because uh, it's been a ton of stuff out there that I can find. It is only now that sales are returning to normal due to the international shipping time that is improving. I've been having better luck with some items we purchased from overseas shipped in than stuff I've mailed out. I've had stuff from like, um, I, we bought something from Argentina the other day and it arrived before something from Arizona. That was, and the Arizona item was sent after that that uh, Argentina item. So it, it just it, it's no rhyme or reason to what's going on. The most of the problems I have are coming from the, the uh, West Coast. Anything coming from that side or going to that side seems to take like two or three times what it normally does. I have three hundred dollars worth of personal stuff sitting in the mail, some electronic equipment sitting in the mail somewhere for three weeks now. You know, so um, it's very frustrating. But again the stuff coming from overseas is shown right up. I don't, you know, it makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. HN Tech, hello, I started selling on eBay, Amazon, starting 20, and been doing well over at 70% profit. Is everyone else doing this well, or is that easy to make money online? I've been scouting all over the place, just seeing what kinds of inventory I could sell. Yeah, there's right now. I'm t for me. I could find records, postcards. There's paper stuff going on. The local live auctions are all running. So if I want to sit in an auction, I can do it. I, the table cleanups, from what I, I see, have been just. That's the place where I would go is get the table cleanups if you've never done that before. Because you can get a whole table for like five and ten bucks at some of the ones around here. And usually it's stuff that looks like junk, but you know there's some real good stuff in there you know, $50, $60 pieces of paper and stuff, photos, and just stuff that most people think's junk. You know, that's where I do a lot of good business at, too. Have I got any stamps lately? Yes, I have. Um, well, I don't want to walk off, off the, the video, but I've got some really nice Italian ones here, too. It's the second lot. I got blocks, and it's from 1933. It's an Italian, and this is the second one lot of these I got from the same person, mind you. But I got... Um, with it, I've got autographs from Italian Air Force officers, the pilots, fighter pilots from 1933. And in there is an International Expo, a whole bunch of those stamps in there. Again, second time I got them. I've already separated it, and I'll probably be parsing out the pilots because many of them were World War II pilots. There's some really key names in here, and they're all autographed, including the second-in-command of the Italian Air Force at that time, which is really cool, because at that point, obviously, they weren't involved with, you know, the whole, um, you know, Axis and Ally and the whole work. So, anyway, 
really good clean uh, really good um, for me anyway the stamps in there are awesome they run around 25 to 30 bucks a piece I got well over a hundred of them so you can do the math on that that was a real good score and I, I didn't pay much for them it was under 50 bucks for the entire lot so again that was a killer score for me uh, let's see here Hang on, let's pop up here. My feet's going too fast for me now. It's caught up, and now I'm way back behind. Uh, where are we at now? Yeah, now my feet's gotten away from me. Hang on just a second. I know this happens all the time. It's not me either. I know that. I think it's my local server. Hang on, Don. Does the order in which keywords appear have any real relevance? The most important thing when you're putting the keywords are would be to put the most important keywords all the way to the left. If you're scanning or searching on on looking for something, the buyer would be like on a phone or a device. It cuts off the last so many words. Look how many words. Scroll on your own phone through some random listings and look at where it cuts off. You know you want your keywords to show up in there, even if you're scanning through. You know, when you know that the keyword should be in there, if they don't see it mentally, they might not think it's in the title. Plus, obviously, if it's not right up in the front, people may think it's not that important, the keyword they were looking for. So always rank it. So left to right for everything. Most important words always got to be on the left. Always, 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 always. Think of it that 30, maybe 40% of the people by Christmas could be literally searching from their phone for, for stuff to buy. And that's how I always look at it. Phone friendly and Amazon friendly. Those are the two things you want all your listings to be. Amazon friendly for your photos, photo quality, white background, 85% image, 15% white, nothing else in your image. Those are all the things you got to do for reselling. And just do one standard for every single listing you have. Don't do listings for eBay. Don't do separate listings for Amazon. Just set up one photo wherever you're going to list it, whether you're cross-listing, double-listing, whatever you want to call your, your process. Use a photo that's qualified to go up on, on Amazon without an issue because if they're good for Amazon, they're good everywhere. Every single site will take an Amazon-quality photo. Not trying to promote Amazon, but but it's just factual that if you follow their standards, you can't get dinged for your photos. They'll be fine anywhere. You know, uh, that's just my standard. That's what I try to do for everything. We've removed anything else in the photos. We've tried to crunch them down. We crop them down. You know, get that 15% or less white up there. That's what you want. That's the best way to do it. Keywords, as I said, all the important ones to the left. What's going to show up in a phone? 30%, 40% in some categories are looking just by a phone, just by a tablet, just by something like that. So it, in my book, it's 100% important. Uh, I think I've missed something somewhere in here, but we will get back down to it. Summers422, how are you doing? Yeah, I always forget to say hit the thumbs up, but if you enjoy the conversation, please do hit the thumbs up. This is not going to be a very long conversation. We're going to run until at 8, and I really got to cut it off there. Um, we've got somebody coming over to help do some voices for something else. I do have other projects. Um, now that the Weeble one is about done, I have started on some other projects. Um, and for those in Patreon as well, I've got past my roadblock that we talked about in the live show this week. So um, next week's we're moving on um, with Shopify and stuff with that. So we'll get you some more information on that. We're going to go and list and we're going to get ready. I've already... I got a um, the CSV file done too, so we're gonna hopefully I'll get it ready in time. If not, it'll be sometime within the next say ten days. You'll see the CSV upload for Amazon, and then you're gonna see the link from Amazon to link those items back into your Shopify. So you only have to do them once. So just FYI, that's the most important thing to me. You'll see how quick it is. No joke. You saw the mapping from Amazon channel to Shopify. You saw the Ink Frog to Shopify so you know it's really quick and easy that part and I've got tens of thousands of listings if you don't have that many you probably won't have much of an ordeal this is probably a one day thing once you understand how it all works again my Shopify none of that's opened those in, in Patreon know that none of it's opened not marketing anything to anybody we're just going over this is what I am working on so this is what I am showing it's the only reason everybody wants to know or a lot of people do so I'm trying to show the real stuff. We were literally in my account live on um, Tuesday, and I think we would we run. I think we ran three hour live show just on Shopify on on Tuesday. So probably do another live show on on Patreon too this coming up week. 
Um, Bluegrass Picker, how are you doing? I have to assume you're from Kentucky, no offense, or that you're really, really, really into bluegrass, which nothing wrong. I do like a few bluegrass songs too. I like the ones that are almost rockabilly. Uh, let's see here. Where'd we go? Hang on. I think I'm almost caught up. Yeah, we did the stamps. I hope the auction house is open. Yeah, Marty, ours are opened here. Um, there's at least three that, that I've walked up on and saw what they had and stuff. I could have stuck around and bought some stuff, but you know, as I said, I'm, I'm flush. And right now I don't want to lose any pickers because I'm not buying whatever they come up on. So I'm reserving everything I, I purchase from my pickers instead of going out in the real world. Other than, say, a garage sale. I, I got the stuff I just videoed um, earlier today already still sitting here. Um, but again, those in Patreon, we're going to go over and you're going to see some real close-ups and some some bolos that I on explanations on them as well, too. This is something that I love. It's my favorite thing to find that I find quite often three, four, five times a year, I find what I'll show you tomorrow or tomorrow's video. So something I think you should should really enjoy. Well, I am very sorry to hear that, Summer 422. My, my condolences do go out to you very sincerely. It's always sad when something happens like that, and, and we completely understand I've been in that spot. You know, so anyway, it's a tough one. Uh, hey, Ben Rowe, how are you doing? I think you have an email in there, too, that I, it's on my list to get to tomorrow. Duncan, I'm buying all postcards, old photos, documents, letters, stamps from overseas, and I get gets here quick, even with airport lockdown. Yeah, it's local mail. It's it's U.S. mail that I'm having the issues with. It, anything coming Arizona or farther west, it's taken forever. I'm hoping it's not lost, my, my electronic item. Lamb Chop 641, what's a table cleanup? When you go to a local live auction, most most cities and states have the same thing. If a bunch of stuff at the end of the day, nobody bids on them. Nobody wants the opening bid. Sometimes they'll just pass. If it's not like marked for sell at this price or hold off, it goes to the table scraps at the end of the auction. So who's ever left, and usually there's only a handful of people left, it dwindles down to the end, and most people don't stick around to the end. If you stick around for the end, usually what they want to do is just get rid of what's left over, what no one bid on. They usually start the tables at five bucks, or does anybody have a bid? Usually it's five bucks what somebody throws out. I've gotten tables, mostly a full table of small papers and stuff, basically what I normally buy anyway for five bucks on many, many, many occasions. Most of the time, a whole table maybe goes for 20 bucks, 30 bucks. If it's really full, I might have to shell out 50 bucks. And this is with me bidding against a couple other people. That's a table scrap. And, and most everyone around here has that sort of thing. Everyone I've been to does at some some way, shape, or form. Um, there's one that does not does sometimes, but it just depends. And, and it depends on you know who's putting the stuff up for auction, I should say. Some people will say, I want it held off to another auction, or I want to come back and pick it up if it doesn't sell. Go to an If you've never been to a local live auction, anybody out there, if you've never been to a local live auction, I would honestly, sincerely recommend doing it. Do the whole process, just, just once in your life, just to see what it's like. The rule of thumb, if you go to one of those auctions, is look up the items first, go there ahead of time, do the preview time, See what they got. Make a list of what you what you think you can make some money on. Make sure before the auction you've looked it all up and set yourself a max price I would pay for anything. If it hits my price, if it goes a dollar over it, I stop bidding. I, whatever it is, no matter what, even if it's only a dollar, I stop my bidding. I never want to get stuck into a spot where I have a bidding war and I just lose control. I my my ceiling is my ceiling. Again, a dollar over, I don't bid over that. I don't care. There's so much stuff out there. If it goes a dollar over, it's done. One dollar, then you'll think two, then three, then four, and pretty soon you spent 10, 20 bucks more than you originally thought. So again, I, I don't get into any of those games when you do that. Another thing, if you go to the auctions, sometimes when they're talking, let's say they've got like 20 chairs or 50 chairs or like-like items sitting there, They'll do um, 40 per, 40 per, or 5 per, something like that. Make sure you're, you know the rules at that specific auction. Like if one of the ones says 5 per, you're paying 5 per chair. You've got to buy everyone out there. 
So you gotta you gotta know if it's if they're going at an each auction or or whatever term they're using. Some auctions use different wording, so it just depends on where you're at, how they do it. You can usually get a little glimmer of what they're doing if you pay attention on stuff you're not interested in. You can see how it goes. But so you know, just be careful. As I know I've known people who've bought in like a whole car full of chairs and they didn't know what to do. They didn't realize they they did that. So just be careful. Most of the time too, like um some of the auction houses, you have a standard number. You'll always have the same number if they set you accounts and stuff like that, too. Take your tax ID with you because you won't have to pay tax in a lot of the auction houses as well. The ones I go to, if you pay cash, you don't pay any extra fee, no finance fee. You'll still pay a buyer's commission, which is like 2 to 3% on some of them. It depends on where you're going. Buyer's commission. So if you, the item sells for 10 bucks, the buyer's commission could add you know, 30 cents or even a dollar or two onto it. Sometimes it's 20% buyer's commission. You just got to pay attention. Always look when you sign up for the auction to ask them what the buyer's commission is because you're going to have to pay that. So I get people that, that are upset. I've even been at auctions and, and seen people getting totally blown up upset. They spent six, $700, pretty much all they had for the items and then didn't realize that they would still have to pay buyer's commission. And boy, they, they had to rake out cards and it was just a yelling match in there. But you know, that's the rules they signed up. They even pointed it out. It says on the paper right above where you sign it. So, you know, those are just the rules of the game, but everybody should go at least once in their life. I think to them, I've taken my kids there. My wife's been to auctions with us stuff. If you go to an auction too, bring your own boxes. Most of the ones around here, you got to grab the stuff the minute you buy it. It's off the table. It's yours. And if you leave it sitting somewhere, people are going to take it, at, even the ones around here in many cases. I've had people try to pick up my stuff if I stepped away even three, four feet away. So I carry the box with me or I have a backpack or something. You get up, your seat's gone, and your stuff's gone. So you forget something at the auction, it's gone usually too. Just the way the, the way it goes, you know. I'm not saying they're all crooked or anything, but that's what my personal experience was, and as well as many other people that I know. You got to be careful and put them in a box. Keep it all together. Know what you're getting to. Most all of them have online previews, at least the the sites that the places that I go to, um, and you can see it photos. And if you need to see something else, I just give them a call. I know them by first name basis. Most of the ones around here. You know, I've been to them enough, and if I they get something specific, I'm on their lists to give me a buzz or drop me an email. You know, those go through all my fi email filters and go straight on in, so I always look at those. Hopefully that helps, that answers that. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, a lamb chops, some, lots of the stores, Goodwill's open, but it's just really hard to get stuff. Goodwill in general, I don't I don't go to at all anymore. I, I Maybe for a video or just to show how terrible it's been, but most of the ones around here auction off their own stuff online now. You know, I think there's one next state over, which not, it sounds a long ways, but it's really not that far. There's a fish market over there that we go and get smoked salmon. It's the best smoked salmon in like a three-state area. They smoke it there. It's just it's just a bomb. But um, when we go out there, we always hit the thrift store. It's in, it's just over the Michigan border. It's, it's pretty good. We usually find stuff. They got a lot of NOS at that one. But again, they're not online. That's the only difference. You got to figure out which ones aren't online. Those are the ones are better. But again, some of the other ones who are online, they'll get the stuff instead of them sending them to the ones that aren't online. You know, they all come from a central place usually, unless it's like a lo local dump off station or something, or the bins that are sitting outside. That's my personal experience. I don't know what everybody else has with that, but that's what I see um, when I'm out there doing that kind of thing. Uh, let's see here. Bluegrass picker, I got a crazy old train that winds today for two bucks. Now, there's a lot of those wind-up trains. Some of them aren't worth a ton of money. I don't know which one you have, of course, but there's one that looks like a 1930s. It's a real long one. I run into that one about once a month. Some of them are good, some of them aren't, but um, Marks is a name I look for, and any of the nice Japanese names, of course. The Japanese wind-up toys are some of the best ones that I run into from the 50s, probably, and on down. Any thoughts... Uh, Nasser Pike, I guess, or Peck X. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. I do apologize. Any thoughts on great price indicators for listings on any bay? No idea what you're trying to refer to on great price indicator for listings. Depends on the item you're selling and depends on, you know, comps and what's going on with that. 
a tech gem? Do you just resell items that you find or do you sell brand new items? We do pretty much everything. We create our own items. I do my own artwork. We sell our own uh, printed work that I've created. My wife writes the, the stuff on the back. We've got several books in the process now and those will be something we'll be marketing too. We have toys that we produce. Um, I haven't shown some. I, I need to get to it because we are selling some toys that I haven't shown you guys before. But um, we do make and create our own as well. The kids here will cast. Um, we've got a vacuum uh, table so we can make our own bubbles. And I get the cards printed from the same people that print our postcards. And then we assemble them here and then we sell them that way too. Um, I have been in talks with a toy manufacturer too so we may do something with that but I sell anything really that's um, interesting and that I can get my hands on that's a good quick turnover um, I do have pros and cons lists for everything so I don't sell things that are risky things that have a high return rate things that there's just a scam rate on them I, I just don't mess with like high dollar electronics and stuff I would rather sell hundreds of really cheap or really less expensive items with no issues with them than to sell a couple high dollar items. That's just me. Um, I don't have to worry. The return rates is almost zip on everything we sell. So that's a plus. I don't have to worry about a return or something coming back. Box is open. I can't sell it as NOS now. I just lost some money. I don't worry about any of that. I literally did a, a pro and con for everything. I mean, we even sell brand new CDs bought wholesale and stuff like that and you know whatever I can get you know we've sold thousands of CDs that way it's one listing the same CD sells over and over again same DVD sells over and over again again that's a good way buying wholesale to get on gated and stuff like that on Amazon you know um, I am on gated in many categories that I know a lot of people have had some um, very uh, hard times trying to get into them. I got historical entertainment. I've got collectibles. I can pretty much sell used anything um, that would be entertainment tied, which would be DVDs, CDs even. Um, plus, I can sell those in, in the new section uh, as well with the invoice. You know, you buy enough of something, you get an invoice. As long as it's an approved one from Amazon, and I only use the approved wholesalers that uh, Amazon allows. So, you know. Anything's game. Hang on, let me slide down here. Hopefully it actually moves. Ecom Squad, how are you doing? Hey, Paul, how's it going? The state sales have been backed up around me. Picked up a nice lot of around 2,000, 35 mil slides for 30 bucks. Wow, that's pretty cheap. Hopefully you got a bunch of... Um, uh, red Kodachromes in there too. Those are those are really the ones that I always look for. I have got, geez, I don't know, maybe ten thousand real nice um, Kodachromes, nice fifties or before red Kodachromes. I haven't even looked through them. I got them. They've been sitting here. Um, I figure one day, you know, I'm not again um, turning down something when it turns up my way. There's been a lot of that stuff going around though, because people are are trying to get money. You know, those who are unemployed. So. Odds and ends and all kinds of weird oddball stuff have been showing up. Stuff they found in the attic, stuff they thought, what am I going to do with this? It's out at the sale. So I can't wait for the next big flea market because I could almost assure you there's going to be a lot of pickup stuff there. You know, you're going to want to carry a wad of cash would be my guess. My projections, that's what I predicted. This is, this is what would happen because, again, there's been a long influx of time when no one could, could source, no one could sell it's just backed up, you know. Even the estate companies have been having stuff set up. They've got so many estate sales lined up, from what I have heard. You know, who knows how many there could be? So, you know, there's a couple new companies even out there trying to help uh, fix the issue up. So, I'm excited about you know what's going out. Again, some uh, summer sourcing extravaganza. That's literally what it is. I, I can't tell you how delighted it's it's been to see stuff like I haven't seen in years, you know, all of a sudden just popping up old toys, um, geez, just all kinds of stuff that I just don't run into very often at these sorts of places. I don't have to go very far. Usually I ought to go someplace a little far off or wait for a picker or go to a big flea market to find the stuff I was finding, but man, it's just all over the place now. Annie, I'm still not doing any non-essential mingling with humans the numbers aren't back down to yeah i completely understand i wore a mask I, I literally went to a garage sale that's the first real place i've sourced that um you know other than a picker you know and i do wear a mask to the picker
completely understand, Annie. I'm 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 very cautious. Again, I don't need to go sourcing in in general public, but um, my my uh, pickers I do go to still. You know, you got to weigh. I've got to weigh my options. I guess as long as I'm safe, I don't touch my face. I wash. You know, I got gloves and the whole works. You've seen what I I think I've shown what I wear when I'm out. Uh, hang on. It's I see Bob here, and it won't let me scroll to see what Bob's got to say. Uh, I have been to garage sales the last two weeks, and then they say it's escalating again. I'm 77. Wonder about going out or not going out. I do have enough back stock for quite a while. I would rock some of the back stock too, as well. Um, again, I had no no plans on going anywhere today, other than the post office, and that was an essential. I do hit my pickers, you know, still cautiously but i do hit my pickers um they're not they're they're older so they're cautious going out in public as well and you know no fevers no nothing else it's very selective crowd i'm at yeah but i did see the numbers were going back up for sure uh let's see here as long as the numbers go up but the deaths don't go up that would be better because it would show that the rate of loss has gone down you know they still can't give out you know satisfactory numbers in my book on things just because they can't test everybody to say the last thing i saw said that the the your immunity may only last for a very short time and you could get it again right away so you know unless there's a vaccine i don't see this being a issue going away just like that a vaccine's going to be the only real way unless it mutates to where it's not you know destructive anymore i guess you could say let me pop back up because my thing's bouncing around uh, Italian stamps are good and worth a lot. I have a lot of the early Italian county stamps. I got a bunch of counties too as well. I did pick up um, a worldwide stamp um, album, one of the big thick ones from like 1930, and every stamp in there is from pre-1930. There's a huge chunk of, you know, 1800 stamps going back to like the first, you know, couple dozen issues of, God, I don't know how many different countries in there. So there's some real early stamps in that book. And those are the ones I usually try to buy. It doesn't look like somebody's picked through them. I bought them from a relative of the person who collected these back then. It was a childhood collection. It's been in an attic forever. The book's fallen apart. It's It's got a leather binding, if that tells you. It's, um, it's a name brand. I wish I could remember it. But it's an international one, too. It was made in England. Maybe Gibbons, maybe, was the brand on it. You'd probably recognize that name, Duncan. I'm almost sure it's Gibbons. I saw you, Summer 422. Good evening as well. Oh, did I miss up? Did I miss up on here? Boy, my chat's all over. Uh, George, uh, thanks for the answer. The same happened to me with shipments, some arriving in the United States in a week, and others took more than a month. The post office must still be in recovery. Now, I've had somebody here locally who works at the post office tell me that there's been some, like, stoppage points where stuff's just sitting there because of not enough employees wanting to come in or whatever the issue. I don't know what the total issue is, but they're stuck. And then all of a sudden, they start rolling. So then the local post office just get flooded with a whole bunch of stuff all at once, and they can't go, go and sort it through. So you get all these, like, bottlenecks that stuff backs up, and then it flows, and then backs up and flows. That's what I've been told. No reason for somebody to tell me that if that's not what's happening. And it does seem to make a little sense. What I can say is small packages, you know, first class packages are taking the longest if they're small. If they're, you know, larger size stuff, they seem to be showing up really quick. The bigger the package, the quicker they seem to get here. Uh, I have rules and soda can reference in some of my photos. I need to go through and get rid of the excess items. Rulers you're not supposed to use. You're not supposed to put cans or anything like that in an image. At least for the first image, I would never do that. 85% um, rule is what I go by. 85% of the image should be the item in question. And then 15% should be the um, just plain white. Nothing else. If you can fill it just with the item again, that's perfect. Again, with the zoom-ins, like on paper items, the zoom-in just pretty much accomplishes everything in the first image. So it's just, just the image itself, just the item. Vintage Planet, well, thank you very kindly. Do appreciate that. If anybody hasn't hit that thumbs up, we're almost 150 people. I've got uh, 50 thumbs up, so I'd love to get that to 100 before the show's over. 
There you go, Duncan. It's it's you're to blame now, Duncan. Cosmic Thrifter, how are you doing? Yeah, the alerts are not going out. Yeah, I think you have to re-hit them again. Um, I've had uh, dozens and dozens of people tell me they're not getting the the notifications. I think they go through and stop them, and then you got to restart them at some point because for some channels that I usually watch, you know, in the late evening just before bed, I haven't gotten any notices on those, and they don't post very often. So, but still. Let me slide down. There, my feed jumped again. Oh, uh, let's see here. Hey, Steve, how are you doing this evening? Things are going pretty good. I can't complain, in all honesty. Things can always be worse, but other than um, spending a lot of time and working on stuff, my time's just occupied. I don't have time to do anything during the day. I don't turn on anything other than maybe in the background when we're list, uh, listing or doing something down here or something. Other than that, I don't even see any news or anything till the evening, real late too. And sometimes we just put on a show instead of that or part of a movie and you know, I usually fall asleep watching something. Hey Cindy, how are you good? How are you doing this evening? Good to have you in here. Greg Vallejo, how are you doing as well? Let me slide down just a little bit here. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, how long does it take for sales to pick up on Shopify? You've got to bring your own traffic into Shopify. And as I said, I'm not, um, my Shopify is not opened. Um, I plan on not opening it for another month at least, I would figure. Um, it will be open in third quarter, before fourth quarter. I would recommend anybody to test every little aspect of it. Know how everything works. I, I say this, I preach this. Don't really get it heavy into eBay or doing anything until you understand the entire platform, how refunds work, how shipping works, how the paperwork's going to work, how your taxes are going to work, how you know the whole process works from start to finish. Make sh That way you can make sure everything's set up. You can create dummy sales. You can run them through the system, and that's what we've been doing a lot of. Um, so I'm not all the way up on Shopify getting it running at this point. I'm just making sure I understand everything in it. So when I do go live, if something does happen, I'm already set. Everybody should do that for wherever you're selling on it. It's, it's a no-brainer. I do that for every single side I, I've been on. I know how the affiliates, every side I do, I understand pretty much anything you could want on there. And again, as with those in like my Patreon, you guys know we're going in Shopify. You're, you're at the same spot I am as we're going over it. So, um, you know, I can't say. I know I know what other people do on Shopify, but I can't say personally. And, um, you know, Shopify, the, the main aspect of having a Shopify isn't necessarily selling it through Shopify. Of course, you want to sell your stuff mostly through the Shopify because you'll pay less in fees over any other place that you sell on. But the biggest part of Shopify is the syncing, that I can sync my eBay and any other place I have it on, and I can broadcast out from Shopify, and I can sync the same items I've got up on eBay with Amazon. So if it sells on one side, it's taken down from the other. I don't have to do a thing. If, if you've been like me and you've been trying to cross-list and using these apps and all the other stuff that don't really do that much, the, the best Best thing here is that this is automation. Shopify offers you automation without having employees. What we did in the past, I would list something on three different sites, sometimes four different sites, the exact same thing. If it sells on one site, I have to manually take that item down from three other sites every single night. Or if you don't sell a lot, you might only do it once a week or something, but you run the risk of selling it twice, double selling the same item. If it's something hot, something you just listed up, you got to take them down. So that's a lot of labor for the 60 bucks. And this is all it's going to cost me is 60 bucks, 30 bucks for Inkfrog and 30 bucks for Shopify. I don't get a dime either for saying this. So I'm just using this to solve my problem. Again, I'm not marketing. I have no links. I don't get a dime if you go there and do anything with Inkfrog or Shopify. That's not my mission here. My mission is to, is to um, get my own business to where it's all... 
you know, an autopilot. I don't have to do any of their pull downs. I don't have to do anything like that. I can list the item once. I can upload a CSV file. I can link and I'm done with anything else. So it's just sitting stuff there and letting it sell from wherever it sells from. That's the goal. That that's that's what it gives me. It gives me the the linkability, the the auto sync from page to page or site to site. That's what I want. It's worth the sixty bucks to me, even if I don't sell a ton, just to have those links, just to save me that much. God, if if I sat there and had to add up all the hours that I would spend doing this and what we have spent in the past with pulling stuff down or having employees do it, this is far cheaper probably a quarter of the cost of, of time it could be on a real busy month so again it, it's going to save me money and still allow me to do what I was doing before but more efficiently and cross list far more items quicker easier without doing any hassle so Shopify is is a money saver um, a time saver labor saver it's a tool that's all it is you know it's not necessarily the Shopify it's it's the whole stuff that comes with it. That that's what I should say, you know. And to have the reason I have Inkfrog and not just Shopify because the eBay channel doesn't do best offers. Ninety nine percent of what I sell are best offers. Inkfrog offers best offers as well as managed payments. eBay's own API channel off of Shopify, from what I fully read in there, says no managed payments as well. So. Maybe they'll put it in there. Maybe it's fixed. I don't know, but I don't like the idea of no best offer. And I don't like the idea of once you've signed up through the eBay channel with Shopify, you can't go back to the normal selling on eBay like you did before. I think you'd have to end those listings and then re redo them as a whole new listing to be under full control. Because, again, they were created through Shopify and not through eBay. So there's a lot more to it. So, again, Ink Frog's your best answer. And I've spent months and months and months trying other options, other apps, Cellbrite, and all these other things, and this seems to be the best. Even with the glitches, even with the issues, even with the, the aggravation, it's at least I know I can wipe stuff out and restart over if I need to. It just means I'm learning more while I do it. I don't have any problems with having issues with stuff, just FYI. It's just a roadblock. Thank you very kindly for that $5 super chat, Daryl. I honestly and sincerely do appreciate that, but you, you don't have to do that. You know, you support me in many other ways, Daryl. And again, it's all honestly and greatly appreciated. We spent a lot of time in these last three weeks. Wait till you see the, the Weebles video if you want to see time-wise. Um, again, it's just over 12 minutes at this point. So thanks again, Daryl. I, I do appreciate that very kindly. Let me let me let's try to get to some more questions again. I'm I'm gonna have to cut it at eight today, just because I've got stuff still going on. So no offense to anybody, no trying to cut anybody off, but um, unfortunately that's gonna have to be what happens. Uh, let's see here, Ben Rowe taking a break from looking up that record lot. Got through about 300 so far. What tends to be your most popular collectible item around the holidays? Postcards, toys, records, other. What's soon? Postcards always sell. And again, I sell my own Halloween postcards. I've got my own Christmas postcards already submitted to my printer. Again, I videoed that. That's going to be up as soon as I get a chance to get it situated on the um, Art Professor, my other channel. I do have another channel. Um, and there'll be some sneak peeks on Instagram. So if you want to see some stuff that's going on, there will be some clips on Instagram. Um, other than that, the only way to see those would be to be in Patreon, stuff like that. Um, but uh, Halloween stuff, postcards go well. Decorations, paper mache. Um, I can grab one thing. Um, I do great with these. These I always love selling. Um, in fact, you might see some green screen effect from this. But these sorts of things I love finding. Um, and in fact, this one has some damage, which I'm going to repair. That may be in a patreon video i'm not sure these are something you can make your own that's got some dust on it but you can make your own of these in all honesty it's it's literally you can make a clay cast it's just paper mache you can make a plaster mold of the paper cat or the of your clay cast it's a two-piece mold i mean these are really easy you can make your own honestly if somebody wants to um speaking of crafts on the other channel I am going to be trying to put together a video of what people do for crafts and sell for seasonal wise. And what I would like to do, um, I'm not sure how many people will be interested and if I don't get enough I won't be able to do it, but I'd like to show 
have people send me a, one one of their craft items that they do, and I'll feature it and talk about it, and we'll talk about what interesting things other people do and make money off of. On the other channel, The Art Professor, um, you can send stuff to me. Uh, again, there won't be any guarantee. It has to be family-friendly items. This is pretty much open to anybody. Um, and you'll get a link if you've got an email address or something or a website. I will put that in the description for anybody who sends something in that I do put on the show. I can't guarantee everyone would go on the show again. Time factors and things like that, too. But, you know, I do a lot of stuff craft-wise, and I make money at that, too. I've always made a profit on stuff like that. It won't be discussed on what you, how you make it. It'll just be discussed on the item itself. You know, if you want to do it as a promotional, I will be happy to, as I said, put your stuff in the description box so everybody can see and purchase it. There'll be an order of how they're discussed in the video so they can click on one, and that will be yours if you're number one slot in the whole works. You know, I won't be able to return the items again. I don't have time to sit here and send back a whole bunch of items. People do send me stuff right now, but this is something to get your, your item in front of public if you're interested. It will be promoted on this channel as well as on the other channel as well. Um, first preference does go to patrons. I did call that to, out to them on Tuesday's live show on Patreon. So the first show, if I get enough from patrons, will be all the patrons, and then we'll move on to anybody else from there. But um, I'm, I'm never surprised anymore on some of the stuff people do. It's very creative. A um, lot of the stuff, you know, no one else would be able to do, or it would take them, you know, a lot of time and effort. They're unique items that people sell like that. But I'd really love to showcase and show people the the vast amounts of, of things that people make money on. So if there are any crafters or handiwork people out there that would like to send something, um, I'm going to show some in the video again with, you know, how to get in contact with you as well. So it'll be out in public somewhat. So, you know, we'll be pushed and promoted on the feed. It's not going to go anywhere. It'll be there for, you know, for indefinitely too. So if there is anybody out there, again, this is your chance. How to send it, where to go. If you go to my About Me channel page, I do have a post office box listed in there. So again, my full information is listed on there to send me something through to our uh, post office box. Again, if, the, if you are interested. So again, just holler that out there. I'll have some more calls on that, too, as we get closer. I have had a couple people already say they're going to send something, so that's fine. Cindy, how did you send the photos? It would be my question. Um, I get, if, you, if, if you're if you in Patreon-wise, again, it, I sometimes mix up my names on who is and who isn't because I've got, like, I think there's just over 300 people in Patreon now. Um, you can send them through Patreon or post them up on the page. If you're going to send them somewhere else and you are on my Patreon page, um, you can just um, let me know through Patreon where you're going to send them and I'll make sure to see them. Um, no offense at all. Again, it's been a long day. Uh, I'm Sometimes I'm bad on names or what's going on. On who's on which group, which page. Um, Amazon Seller 99 took us almost two years to get all our data cleaned and in standard format so we could cross-list on multiple channels. It's a serious project when you have a large inventory. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But it will be worth it. Um, the the Shopify flow is, is pretty easy. Once you've figured out the setup and stuff, the hardest part is figuring it out. So if you mess it up and start over the second time, it's going to be so much easier and so much quicker. So if you've imported wrong or done something else, you have to start over, go back in and, and start from fresh. You know, unlink and then relink it all back up and the whole works. So um, it's all doable. There, there's nothing I, I think that I can see that you can't fix if you mess it up doing in there at least. Time's what it's going to take, you know. Yeah, live auctions are 100% awesome. Carl is 100% correct. I, I don't go to ones unless I see something there. So every live auction I've went to in the past 5 or 10 years, I've probably got some really good stuff. I, I can't say I've ever come home empty-handed with something really good from an auction. Yeah, buyer's choice. Make sure you can play the answer or play the game. Definitely so. Uh, Cindy, I found out what that meant when I bid 99 cents on an item and then discovered that I the whole won the whole table. Okay, yeah, that's again, you've got to be careful. Now, some of them will say buyer's choice, and you can just say I'm going to take five. Some will let you do that. It just depends. Um, 
what was the last one? I was buying boxes of postcards. And I already knew which boxes I wanted. I didn't want them all. And it was um, a buyer choice each or something like that. I don't remember which, which auction house it was at, but I only picked the top five I wanted, you know. Because the first round, he'll go, they'll say... Um, each maybe a hundred bucks. So you pay, pick five at a hundred bucks. They'll come back around. They'll bid up to see who wants the next next shot of, of um, boxes. The next next shot may only be fifty bucks. So you can take however many you want at fifty bucks. It just depends on the auction. Some will say buyer's choice. You got to take them all, all or nothing. So that you got to pay attention. That's that's a huge factor in screwing yourself over if you end up having to spend that money out. If you don't buy it and you and you you purchase it and at the end of the day you try to try to weasel out of it, you'll never be allowed back at that auction house, I would bet you. There's no usual hey, you will give you a second chance because people are depending on the sales to go through. They may have advertised those specific items that you purchased and they lost all that advertisement if they go around. They'd have to wait to a specialty auction and all these other things. So know the rules, whatever you're doing. That's that's very, very important. Went to an auction and bought out a whole section of a garage just for the Christmas ornaments for 25 bucks. I do that too. I bought out huge pallets worth of stuff for almost nothing just to get some of what's in there. We've always done great on that kind of stuff too. Uh, Kathy, how you doing? I want a whole, uh, want a whole small two box of tools at live auction. I was a little surprised when I went to collect it. I'd want everything on the table, including the huge table. Well, there you go. Yeah, you got to be careful. That will happen. Uh, let's see here. Uh, there are other cool things like that at auctions, too. Had to explain in a few characters, but it can be really fun. Bid up price and choose any table or shelf or stuff. That's kind of thing. <sighs> I miss Yeah, I like live auctions. Uh, Marty, six, uh, six months from today is Christmas. Time to get into fourth. I've been in fourth quarter mode already. The whole, everything we're doing right now is to get it all set up for fourth quarter. I don't care if, if, if we don't list new things, if my sales kind of stagnate for a little bit here, I'm not worried at all about that because again, all of our efforts going into getting the, the cross listing aspect up. Once I get everything situated, then it's bomb. It's bomb everything from that we already have up to uh, Amazon with CSV files left and right, and then map them, map, 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 and then CSV, map, 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 CSV, map, map, map. That's going to be labor for several of my people for weeks until it's all done. You know, we're going to have to do, what do I got, like 42,000 listings is what our calculations will be. We're going to have to CSV file up, and we're going to do them in batches of 200 at a time. They'll do 200 CSV uh, listings up. At a staggered rate, so because it takes time for them to be approved, so we'll always have some that are approved that they can go back in and then just map them. As soon as they're approved, they're posted on Amazon, and then from there, since we're already linked, it'll show up on my Amazon channel and Shopify, and then all I got to do is sync map them together. So and that's it through the channel um, app there. Let me see here. Yeah, some of the some of the choice though is choice for all. So you pick all. It just depends on the auction, I guess you could say. I've seen so many screwball words and terminology. Yeah, Amazon seller ninety nine. That's exactly what I said. Write down a price and don't go a penny over it. If it hits a hundred and that was my my factor, I'm not going to go to one hundred and one. I'm done. That's it. Keep a price and be done with it. Don't ever go over it. Keep your rules. Keep your stuff straight, and you'll be good to go for sure. Um, we're going to be ending this in just a few minutes. If you haven't hit the like button, need 11 more likes to get to that 100 mark there. I got 153 people in the house right now, so be awesome if we can just get a few more. I always like to see that 100 mark before I go off on the show. Uh, Carl, they started yours back up, but my wife has pre-existing conditions, so I'm still not going up. Completely understand. You know my son has a heart issue, so I got you there. Uh, let's see here. We picked up over 1,500 records for free last weekend. Haven't started going through them yet. Hopefully find something good. Hopefully they're like 78s or 45s. Those are really what you would want. But for free, you really can't complain. Commissions are 15%. It depends on where you go. Um, like here, some of them are 10% uh, buyer's premium, they call it. 
If you're paying with a charge card, there's a 3% fee to 5% more on that. So it could be as high as 15% with a card, buyer's premium, and your um, upcharge on using a uh, charge card. They have to pay a fee, a processing fee. So that's they just pawn it off on you. Some include the processing fee in their um, buyer's premium at 10 15 whatever it may be. I've seen it as high as 20%. So the higher end ones, sometimes on like the high end $1,000 plus item auctions, sometimes it's 20% those places. They cover the printing of books and things like that too. So yeah, 10 15 here. Yep. Carl says 10 as well. Yeah, as I said, tax certificate for everything. Get your tax ID number. If you don't have one, you sure as heck should have. Legally wise, you have to report it to your state if you're running a business in your state. doesn't matter what state you're in. Everybody has to do that. Well, thanks, everybody, very kindly for getting that up to over 100. Now we're way out, well over 100 here. I am going to cut it off here, though. I do apologize for not getting through a bunch. I got another video for tomorrow. Those in Patreon, we're going to a sourcing video. You're going to like it, I, I promise you. Um, it's got a real good bolo in there, and I'm going to go into a little bit of in-depth on why that bolo is so good. We're going to show you my favorite item is in that video. I've had this item. I've sourced it from a Savers years ago. I still use this item. It, is, it has been the most useful item I've ever gotten, I would say, in my opinion. Maybe not to everybody else, but it's a super bolo. You're going to get to see that tomorrow. So, Again, two videos up tomorrow. Weebles video for Patreon. Patreon gets to see the Weebles video. I should say by Sunday you should see that posted up there. Should have it for everybody else on Wednesday on YouTube is what our tentative goal is. So I do appreciate everybody coming on tonight. Sorry to cut a little short here, but have a good evening. Happy sourcing. It's been a great week for us, and I see it's been a great week for a lot of you out there too.